Hello! Welcome to CDH's Crosswater Primary YouTube channel. My name is Ko Fujimoto. Today I am going to talk about gifts from a foreign person. Green card holders taxation indispensable tax knowledge series. It's, a, it's about the form 3520 and I want you to make sure to avoid 25% penalty for not reporting the gift, certain gifts from a foreign person. So let's get started. Okay, so in this case, you would have a mother, mother in South America, and you are living in the United States. Your mother is so kind and gentle. It's a loving mother, just like, you know, many mothers are like that, and she wants to give you a gift. So the dollar is moving to your account. Okay, if this happens, lucky you, and if this happens, what should mother or should you do in order to avoid any incompliance of the U.S. tax regulations? So let's start. Number one, that's a gift from a U.S. non-resident. The person who is not living in the U.S., like this mother. Um, and then, two, you, a U.S. resident. You, you're living in the United States. So, there is a threshold that is over $100,000 in a year. It could be one gift, or it could be five gifts or 10 gifts. You need to combine all the amounts, amounts for the year. If the total exceeds $100,000, then you need to take an action, or action is warranted. The action is this form 3520. I am only showing the top part of the form, okay? This is not just the entire form. This is just the top part of the form. There are, I think, two or three pages. And at the end, you're going to sign and then you mail it out, okay? So, in this case, let's assume you, as a U.S. resident, receive over $100,000 from a mother uh, who lives in South America. Okay. Then let's, uh, yeah, U.S. resident must file Form 3520. I'm going to explain the uh, mechanics of the form. Okay, now on your left-hand side, now you are on the left-hand side. So the 3520, Official name is annual return to report. Okay, so this is a reporting form, not the paying form, reporting form. Okay, to report transactions with foreign trust and receipts, this part, and receipts of certain foreign gifts. So, receipts. Meaning, it's not, this form is not talking about your mother. This form is talking about you. You are the donee, or you are the person who received the gift. So the receipts of certain foreign gifts must be reported to the IRS, and obviously by the 3520. Okay. So what you need to write in uh, 3520, obviously they need to know who you are. 
your information as a taxpayer. And then date, description of the property received, can be a cash, can be a, a securities, or can be a gold, a precious metal, or real property. And fair market value of such a property. If I think there are several lines where you can describe. So if you have more than you know several items, you need to attach the schedule. Uh, okay. And due date of this form 3520 is April 15 of each year. And if you extend your April uh, 15, if you extend your regular 1040, the form's due date also extended to October 15, but always it's good to file it um, before April 15. Um, so if you qualify as a, you know, if you have a, a receipt of $100,000 from the foreign person this year, which is 20, 2022, then next year, April 15, you must file a 3520. You got that? Okay. The, this is a report, no tax due. No tax due. Don't worry about tax because you are the person who received the gift and the person who gives the gift is a U.S. non-resident and therefore your mother is no U.S. tax due and no reporting required. So your mother is off the hook. You are a to report the content of the gift to IRS. That's all. Sounds very simple, but it's not that simple. So let me just cover certain points at the last slide. Okay, other key rules to remember. I, I let me let me be a little bit dry on this section. It's can't be. Uh, uh, you know, this uh, colorful, moving uh, object type of presentation here. So, the, the, this applies to inheritance too. And the form uses the word bequest, which is not a very commonly used word. And, uh, but, uh, you know, if, you, in, if your parents uh, or your aunt or your grandfather, grandmother, passed away, pass away, and then you receive inheritance. That also uh, needs to be reported in the form. And gifts and that bequest all together over $100,000, okay? They don't, they don't distinguish gifts and bequest. It's all one table here. Now, I want, to you, I want you to avoid this, but I have to say this. If you are late in reporting this, then the IRS charges penalty 5% uh, of the gift received okay, per month up to, meaning maximum percentage is 25%. So in the worst case scenario, you would lose quarter of the gift from your mother, which is, which is, you don't want to tell your mother, okay? You don't, you can't tell that to your mother eh? because mother becomes so sad. Uh, so the priest make sure that you report on time. However, if you, you know, somehow if you found out that you had to but you didn't, there is a procedure called the Delinquent International Information Return Submission Procedures. It's a long name, right? It's, it's a long, long name. Delinquent International Information Return Submission Procedure. In essence, you write a reasonable 
cold statement, the letter to IRS, and this is the reason why I could not submit the Form 3520 on time. And and uh, if I may add, this 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 particular issue of 3520 is very uh, difficult now uh, for for a certain reason. IRS, I think, tends to send you automatic uh, system-generated notice if they receive this uh, delinquent international information return submission procedure package and uh, the process of persuading IRS uh, that you had a reasonable uh, cause could be a very difficult task. I'm not going to get into the nitty-gritty of uh, the difficulties of such a, a procedure. Okay. Caution. Number one, caution. If the donor, meaning if you, in this case it's the mother, if your mother is a U.S. citizen living in uh, South America, this rule does not apply because if she is a uh, citizen, U.S. citizen, then she is a resident of the U.S. no matter where she lives. And to a certain case, green card holder too. If such a green card holder is considered as a domicile in the United States, it's going to be the same thing. So the different rules exist. So make sure your mother is not a U.S. citizen or a green card holder. The number two caution is there are different rules for the money. In this case, I'm, I only talked about the cash, right? So the, if the cash is kept in mother's bank account in, to in not Tokyo, in New York or Chicago or anywhere in the United States, different rules apply because the the cash is in the US uh, it's it's called the US citus assets the uh, um, uh, the real property uh, would be the same uh, if it's a intangible asset if it's a gift there's a different treatment if it's an inheritance, also different treatment comes in. But you don't really need to know the details of this rule, but you just need only need to know that if the assets are on the soil of the U.S., then what I just explained to you may not apply. Okay. And the different rules also, different rules, there are too many different rules, right? Okay. Different rules for money received from a foreign corporation or foreign trust. And uh, this probably may not apply to too many people, but uh, I think the difference is a, a fairly low threshold, not 100,000. I think it's a lot lower. So you got to be extremely careful uh, because you don't want to uh, misreport. Uh, you, don't, you don't want to pay an unnecessary penalty to the IRS. So, uh, for as far as the last point is concerned, if you receive something, please check with a credible CPA to find out if you do need to report 3520 or not. I think that's a, that's a very important uh, uh, point, I think. Uh, pr also, you know, please contact us, uh, CDH, International Accounting Firm. I have three references uh, about uh, the 3520, the form 3520 in this video. So feel free again, feel free to look them up and uh, study by yourself. And contact CDH at crossborder at cdhcpa.com. Crossborder at cdhcpa.com. And this is our disclaimer, regular disclaimer. And we have a crossborder family practice our mission our mission is to help the people like you who has had uh, cross-border 
lifestyle. Me, as you can tell by my accent, I was born in Japan and I came over to the US when I was 24 maybe. Then lived here as uh, first F1, OPT, practical training visa, H1B visa, green card, and after I think probably 10, 15 years of green card, I decided to obtain U.S. citizenship. <clears throat> so now I am a U.S. citizen because the Japanese nationality law uh, dictates that if I, a person like me, voluntarily take on other countries' nationality, then the Japanese nationality automatically disappears. So I lost my Japanese nationality. But uh, like you, I am also a cross-border professional. And our mission and my mission too is to help you based on our experience and based on our expertise to smooth out or to help you achieve your dreams as a cross-border professional and cross-border family. So that's all. Thank you very much for listening and watching. Uh, see you next time. Take care.